Welcome to Top Advisor Marketing, where you will learn how to become a prolific online influencer, attract more ideal clients, and grow your practice. Brought to you by Top Advisor Podcasting, a done-for-you podcasting solution built just for trusted advisors. And now, your co-hosts of Top Advisor Marketing, Kirk Lowe and Matt Halloran. Hello and welcome to another Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. Today, we are crossing the Atlantic for somebody who's actually traveled all over the world and done business in some very, very fun countries, which we're going to find out a little bit more about. And uh, not long ago, opened up a firm called The East Agency, and his name is Diederik Heinink, and he is the CEO and founder of The East Agency, and he does a lot of stuff that uh, is going to be very, very valuable to all of you. One, helps with business marketing strategy. Now, a lot of people really kind of, you know, uh, shake their head and say, "Ah, you know, so many people say that, but this is the real deal. He's done it for huge companies uh, from a communications and marketing standpoint, uh, especially when it comes to fintech. I'm super excited to have an uh, an opportunity to learn from him. And so, uh, Dietrich, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Matt. All right, let's let's uh, let's tell everybody a little bit about yourself, man. Uh, how did you get to where you are, and and uh, talk a little bit about your your pedigree and your history and stuff like that, please? Yeah, sure. Well, again, happy to be here. Well, I was born forty eight years ago. I still can't believe it myself if I hear it, but uh, uh, in in the Netherlands, uh, it was near uh, Hilversum, in the middle of the country. It's actually the media city of the of the country. Currently living in uh, Amsterdam, one of my favorite places uh, in the world, although I've been living in more places around the world. And my career, if I skip to that one, uh, has actually always been in marketing, communications and sales. And I think one one thing is is really connecting all the different jobs and, and, and things I did is that it's always been very entrepreneurial, even if I was in a permanent role with a, with a, with a corporate, but and obviously also when I did the things uh, uh, for my own uh, company or for a, a own company, it's always been a very entrepreneurial approach to um, uh, to what I was doing. Well, anyway, and after, um, well, having my own agency for a while, also in, uh, in Asia and in Hong Kong and in uh, Singapore, and also back in the Netherlands, having worked in several, uh, well, as we call it uh, in the Netherlands, interim jobs. So doing specific projects uh, for uh, companies uh, in marketing and communications, uh, in this case, mostly in finance, not always. In the beginning of my career, I was working for uh, agencies. Then uh, a lot of those interim projects for, uh, well, like I said, especially financials. I mean, I once started there and, you know, they they kept on asking me back and uh, doing new projects again. Yeah, and then up till uh, via the, the entrepreneurial adventures in uh, Asia now uh, started, uh, well, only in September last year uh, with East, which is a, well, fintech marketing agency. So elaborate on what that means to you. This is this is what is fascinating to me because, you know, so a lot of people think that fintech markets itself. How, how do you help fintech develop and steer their marketing and business strategy? Yeah, well, that's a good, good question. Well, first of all, um, fintech, of course, is still very young segment, so to speak, a very young sector. And, 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 and my definition is it's all companies who have a technology solution for the financial services sector, actually. So it's quite broad. And then some people uh, say, uh, oh, you also have insert tech or other tech companies within the financial industry. But uh, to me, that's all uh, fintech uh, as well, to be honest. Uh, so it's a, it's, it's a huge, a huge market, uh, first of all. So it's uh, I think estimates are around 20,000 companies uh, in, the, in, the, in the world. And uh, I'm not surprised if it would be even more. So it's, and it's a quite a crowded space because it's, it's, it's quite uh, low. It has a low barrier of, uh, of uh, entry, I think. And uh, I mean, you know, there are a lot of smart people around the world who have who know about the technology. So a lot, a lot are starting uh, uh, these fintech companies also because I think there's a lot of money to make. But what you then get is uh, most of them are uh, technology uh, guys and girls or, or product specialists and not always per se uh, marketeers. 
But given the fact that it's a crowded space, there's a high need to market themselves. And I think now it's uh, slowly but surely uh, this sector is maturing. These companies also discover that uh, indeed they need to have a real professional marketing strategy and communication strategy in place to uh, distinct themselves in this uh, crowded space. And that's uh, actually where um, these can help. Now, financial services professionals in general have the same issue. It's a crowded space. What do yeah. you recommend to help your companies rise above the noise and get attention? Yeah, well, that's a very good one. This is actually, a, you know, this is a topic, well, obviously I would say, but, but it's an interesting one. Uh, I discuss a lot with my uh, uh, clients and with, with, you know, partners in the, in the, in the business and sector. I, I think what you see now is a, is a lot of digital marketing uh, agencies and companies uh, entering the market or they have entered the market over the, the past years, of course. And, and I mean it with all, all respect, but what you not always see is that the content marketing, for example, they're developing for uh, uh, their clients or, or just the marketing strategies. It's, it's quite often, I think, about volume, you know, just like you have to be out there. You, you need uh, 10 LinkedIn posts per month or you need 20 tweets per month. And, well, I think uh, if I may use the word, uh, that's, that's, that's quite uh, bullshitty because in, in the end, it's about brands and uh, companies and they should be relevant and distinctive in the market, right? Uh, in the end, they all have competitors and they should stand out from the crowd. Well, uh, that, that doesn't happen uh, at least not just on volume, but especially on qualitative and distinctive marketing strategy and hence content so uh, that's really key in actually all the all the discussions i have with my clients uh, you know from that point of view the basics of uh, philip kotler i think are still there you have to uh, distinct yourself from uh, your competitors and uh, if if you don't think about it and just think oh i have to push on the channels you know and have to be there all the time that uh, doesn't always uh, do the trick so, yeah, so vo volume isn't the issue. It's the quality of, of the message. Now, if you don't mind, and I'm not trying to get to your secret sauce here, man, that's not necessarily, I don't want you to give trade secrets away, but if, if you could tell our audience maybe a couple of questions that you might ask to help them have that epiphany uh, of, of really what makes them unique and different, you know, Diedrich, every, every marketing person has their own line of questions, and we all kind of try to get to the same thing. Do you have anything that's kind of like your go-to question, uh, line of questions that would help maybe jog our financial services professional's brain to pull that out of their brain? Yeah, I, th I think it, you always have to be a go, and, and that's in my my point of, from my point of view, really the core of, of, of marketing, especially marketing communications. Always try to, to ask yourself or the company you're working for, or the client you're working for, I think, uh, really go to the core. So really try to, to ask that extra question uh, to really find out what makes this company or this product or their servers, what, what makes it different for the, uh, for the user uh, of the product, the, the user or the, or the customer of the product or the, the, the prospected customer at least. Because I think qu quite often uh, we do not ask that, that extra question and we think, okay, well, this is this is okay. And then, you know, we start creating a marketing campaign or a content marketing campaign or, or whatever we uh, choose to do and uh, and uh, we go out. But I think if you if you ask just a couple of extra questions to yourself or to the advisor you're working with or to the client you're working with. So, you know, why are you really here and and, and, and uh, what's really your view on, uh, on on launching this service and product? What what problem does it solve, et cetera, et cetera, and really go into depth. Um, then you really find out uh, the, 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 well, I think that's a word, the, the, the crux, you know, the, the key to what, what it, what's really the distinctive element. And, and, and that should be the basis, I think, then for every marketing and communications campaign that you, uh, that you start. You can build from there, actually. Now, dude, that, that was great. Yeah, that was awesome. In, in a lot of it, everybody is that second and third level question. You know, when when somebody says, you know, what problem do you solve? Or I help people, you know, uh, have a successful retirement. OK, well, you give me more. Right. You have to give me more than that, because that that's the that's the cursory answer. And what people really want is that depth. And, and that's what it sounds to me like East does is it helps create that brand and messaging and communication depth, which is freaking awesome.
Now, Diedrich, you're not the first uh, international person that we've had on the show, but I think it would be uh, negligent of me not to have our audience have a chance to maybe get to know you personally a little bit better. I think it's pretty darn clear about who you are and what you do, but now I want to get to know you as a human. Do you mind if I ask you some basic human questions? Of course. No. So, so, so when you're not being an entrepreneur and traveling all over the place, what do you do for fun? Well, then I still travel. <laughs> but, but, uh, but then for fun, actually, we, we just came back from uh, South Africa, which was amazing. So I'm living together with my uh, uh, girlfriend. Uh, we, we only met uh, two and a half years ago, so that's still quite, uh, quite fresh. And it's, it's, uh, that, that's amazing. Uh, we both love to travel. Uh, South Africa, for example, was a place we both uh, never been before. So that, uh, that's, that's, that's a great adventure on itself, you know, to both discover a new country. I mean, we've, we, we were only there for two weeks it's not like we've seen the whole country but uh, sure. but it was amazing um i, I love sports I, I also do that obviously to stay fit for the the, the work that i do you know I mean, you make quite some hours and and uh, you know you want to stay fresh in the head so it works for that but i just love to do sports as well it's just uh, actually i just uh uh, that's the uh, advantage of being an entrepreneur. I just, uh, although it's afternoon, I just came back from uh, from the gym where I was, uh, where I spent an hour. Nice. No, so that, so that's great. Uh, I play soccer with a, with a with a team of guys here in uh, near uh, Amsterdam. Uh, so that's that's great. Great. Yeah, I living in Amsterdam. We love to uh, discover new uh, new places. You know, new restaurants or or bars. Amsterdam has developed. Uh, well, big time over the over the over the years. So uh, you'll find actually a lot of really good, you know, restaurants and, and places to uh, to uh, to be. Yeah, so that, so so uh, so that's I spend also quite some time with my family who uh, they live in uh, the Netherlands, and then my sister she decided to move with her family last year, her husband and three kids to uh, Spain, oh. to uh, which is not a bad place. So from time to time we visit them, and uh, and that's near Malaga. So the weather is always good somehow there. So that's great. <laughs> I know this might sound like a, a weird question, but how many languages do you speak? <laughs> yeah, that's a question we get a lot of times. Uh, being Dutch, yeah, it's it's yeah. So it's it's uh, the, uh, Dutch, obviously English, uh, German, which is not not as good as my English, but it's it's pretty good. And especially because it's German for us, it's relatively easy. Hmm. And I also speak uh, French and, and 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 a little bit of Italian. So when you were when you were in Hong Kong, what was your primary language? That was uh, uh, English. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I English. Was English. Okay. Now, yeah, I was. I was actually uh, I was going to start to learn uh, to learn Mandarin, but that's what's uh, around the period that I uh, went back to the Netherlands again. Gotcha. So I never did it. Who is your hero? Well, <laughs> only yesterday I said to somebody. Uh, oh, no, it was actually this morning. Coincidentally, uh, I talked to an advisor and I said, "Well, actually, I don't believe really in having heroes, and I, I might r really not have one. But actually, I have to say, and it might be a bit of a cliche, but and especially being a marketer, I think Steve Jobs, I think, is really uh, well. Hero is a big word, but I, I yeah. highly admire uh, what he, what he all did and." Uh, his vision on the, on 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 marketing and design and and uh, innovation, of course. Um, so I think that's amazing what he has uh, brought to the world. Also in terms of, you know, uh, philosophy and mindset and uh, stuff like that. When you think of the word success, how do you define it, and what does that look like to you? Yeah, I, I love to uh, I love to build. I guess it's one of the th the, the reasons I, uh, I I'm an entrepreneur now. So I, I really love to build a, a company. That's one. But so I guess part of, of success would be that in three or five years you can you, you know you can say uh, oh that's that's really interesting. You know I build a I build a company working with several people now. And but most importantly I think I really love to help. To build the companies of of, of the, the the of the clients I'm working for. So if I see that, uh, so currently I'm working for, for several clients. I'm lucky enough to have you know quite a, quite a few clients already. And when you see that it's working, what you're helping them with, and that uh, marketing or your marketing strategy really helps to grow their company, and that's how what marketing should be should do. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, then, then, then I think you can uh, can uh, speak of success, and, and of course, then then uh, it will be the success of uh, ease as well. So I guess I guess that for me is uh, success. 
What is one thing that you recommend most to family, friends, or clients? Now, this can be a book. This can be a TED Talk. This can be, I, I don't even know. Um, but what is your kind of go-to thing that you're like, yeah, yeah, I like you. You should do this. Uh, that's, an, yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good one. Well, may, maybe, uh, maybe read uh, the biography of, of uh, Steve Jobs. I think that yeah. was, uh, I think it was a very, uh, very interest, interesting one. And of course, you learn there that uh, quite a lot of people uh, didn't think he was that nice a guy. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, but also his uh, the way he gained the success that he had, and how how he was dealing with that, and how we, how he was managing. Uh, himself, his life, and and uh, and uh, Apple. So I think it's it's uh, also great. I even bought. I, I didn't just read the biography. I also bought the uh, the book with all the the one liners that uh, that uh, he had. Oh, and, yeah. And, and yeah, it's 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 interesting. I just sometimes I just go through it, and it's uh, for example, you know, the, the one of the famous one liners like uh, "Never settle for less," you know, and 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 uh, eight people hire eight people and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> Uh, it might now sound simple, but you know he came up with a lot of those one-liners for uh, for the first time. You know, yeah, yeah, un- unbelievable. Uh, yeah, a lot of people didn't like him, but they sure liked what happened working with him. Uh, one of the greatest things I think I heard was, you know, uh, I have never wanted to be the best until I worked for uh, Steve. Like I. I finally realized what my potential really possibly could be because he always pushed, um, you know, and as a leader and as an entrepreneur like you and I both are, uh, we that's kind of inherent, right? That's in our DNA that we want to push people to be their absolute best. And sometimes that's received very well. And, and sometimes it's not. So as we wrap up today's podcast, you uh, you said that you you have a client. So let, let's talk about who your ideal client is. Uh, because we have a lot of different uh, listeners on this podcast. Uh, pretty yeah. much everybody's in financial services, whether that's, you know, again, fintech, whether they're in communications, marketing, financial services professionals, insurance agents, uh, broker dealers, IMOs, FMOs, things like that. If if we could get this podcast in somebody's hands to help you out the most for being such a gracious guest, um, who who would we want to get this in front of? Yeah, well, it can it can be quite uh, quite quite various. But for example, I'm not sure if I can mention, uh, but probably I can. I can mention some names. But one of my clients, for example, is is uh, Suburbia, which is a great startup from uh, Amsterdam. They're an alternative data provider, and so what they do is they get uh, in alt- alternative data. Uh, so, so for these are data, for example, coming from G- GPS, satellite, or shipping receipts, etc. They well, simply said, they read them in, in, in very, you know, uh, snackable formats and insights, but in such a way that it's really valuable uh, management information uh, or marketing information for their clients, for example, retailers or financial uh, in, in, institutions. Well, so I help them. I'm actually more or less their uh, CMO on the, on, the, on, the, on the distance because that's also one of the services that I uh, that I bring. Uh, so so that, that's one. Uh, I still do some uh, some work for ING, the, 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 the big data. Dutch, uh, Dutch bank, but also um, I work for uh, well, let me think three actually uh, payment payment providers, you know, so um, so who uh, who help uh, financial institutions or other uh, parties in the in the financial sector uh, process uh, payments, uh, for example. So it can be it, it's, it's quite uh, it's quite various. But having having worked especially before I started this for those years with with ING specifically in the fintech and innovation quarter. And, and also my years before that in financial industry, I think there it really helps because you have you really know what you're talking about. You know the business, and that also makes that what I was uh, talking about earlier that you can ask that second or third or fourth question. You know, and I think that uh, that's what makes uh, the difference. But it's great. So it's it's a variety of clients, but again, it's obviously it's all within the the fintech uh, industry. Now, you said that you offer CMO as a service. Would you yeah. mind just explaining what that is? Because I think really just the ideal clients and who you're just talking about, the CMO as a service is a great opportunity for our listeners to potentially hire you to do that. Would you mind explaining that a little bit? No, sure, sure, sure. Um, yeah, of course, the, the as a service is a, you know, a bit of a 
hyped to use it that way, but I thought it was it's, it's very clear to uh, to use it that way also for the CMO role. So what I do is, especially for the smaller, for the startups or scale up companies, uh, obviously not for the for the for the ings of the world or the you know the the, the, the real the real, real corporates, but for startups or scale ups who might not have the uh, the the uh, budget or they're just not big enough to uh, to have a CMO uh, full time or, or 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 maybe even for you know three four days a week on their payroll that they can, well hire e as 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 a CMO. so we just agree uh, let's say uh, 15 hours or 20 hours or, or, or 30 hours a month and I uh, or we uh, most of the times it's it's myself doing that as well help those clients uh, defining their first of all uh, marketing strategy but then of course also executing uh, it and that we do not always do all ourselves but we coordinate that uh, from a strategy perspective, so we get in uh, the best copywriters or or designers or whatever is needed, or video editors, whatever is needed to execute the the, the marketing strategy. Does that make sense? It absolutely does. Uh, what is the best way for people to reach out to you to engage you and find out more about who you are and what you do? Well, obviously, they can go to uh, to the to website that I'm uh, really proud of, that, uh, that a very good friend who's a great creative director uh, developed for me. Uh, so that's um, www.east.marketing. Or otherwise, just drop me a, drop me a note or a message on, uh, on uh, LinkedIn. I think that always, uh, I think LinkedIn is a great platform and it works very well uh, for me as well. And we will make sure that we put the show notes to your LinkedIn profile and to your website. So, Diedrich, thank you so much for your time today. My pleasure, Matt. Diedrich Heinrich. Dang it, I had the R in there. Hein, oh, come on, give it, give it to me again, will you? Heining. Oh, God, you know, I'm just going to let you say that. Okay, he's the co-founder of the East Agency. You know, everybody uh, who's been on the podcast before knows that I, I, I really try my best for names. But for some reason, my mouth just doesn't make that sound. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so so uh, for everybody at East Agency and everybody at Top Advisor Marketing, this is Matt Halloran. And uh, if you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, make sure you click that subscribe now button below. And if you wouldn't mind, take two seconds and just give us a rating on iTunes that will help us out hugely and also give us a great opportunity to find out what sort of feedback you might have on what you might want to hear. Or if you do have a topic idea that you would love to hear on the podcast, make sure that you just email me at matt at topadvisor, A-D-V-I-S-O-R-M dot com. We'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. Are you ready to change the way you communicate with your clients? Are you tired of being the best kept secret in your area? Learn how to become a prolific online influencer, attract more ideal clients, and grow your business. Contact us today and see what the power of podcasting can do for your business. Click on the Contact Us link on our website at topadvisormarketing.com and set up a call to learn more. Follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook for more updates and information. This was brought to you by iris.xyz, a platform helping financial professionals become better in business and life through new media and new voices. Visit them and learn more at iris.xyz.